Peters here. Do you know how to hook up your gas-powered portable generator? You know, I've been an emergency manager for decades here in western Washington. And we have frequent winter storms that may include snow and ice, but also high winds. Those high winds and ice bring down tree limbs, and that takes down our, our power grid system. And I also know from experience that when that happens, thousands of people pull out their portable gas-powered generator, start it up, and improperly do this so that, again, I know that there will be people who die from carbon monoxide poisoning. And in fact, I recall one gentleman actually setting himself on fire, refueling a generator improperly. So we're here to talk about how to keep you safe. The first thing you need to do is read the directions. I know, guys, that can be hard for you to do, but this is what's going to keep you safe. Wives and partners out there, make sure they use the directions. There's other safety equipment you also need. Uh, a fire extinguisher. It isn't just the generator, but you need the appropriate cables to hook up the generator to your home. There are some ways to jury-rig it that are not safe, and we'll cover those also. Well, to put your generator into operation, one thing you're absolutely going to need is gasoline. This is a five-gallon can. There's other sizes uh, that you can use. And I've got a siphon kit that we can pull gasoline out of a car should we run out, because, you know, gas stations, most of them, don't have a generator either. So you aren't going to be able to just run down to the gas station and get more gas. And anytime you're refueling or when it generators in operation, you need a good fire extinguisher to go with that. When it comes time to provide power to your house, you don't want to use this type of extension cord. You want to use the right size made specifically for a, a gas-powered generator, and don't forget you need a grounding cable uh, to go with it to keep everybody safe. You know, after a fire extinguisher and proper refueling, the next best thing you can have to get power into your house is what's called a Gentran switch. It costs perhaps around $600. You need a certified electrician to install it. And that provides power from the generator into your electrical panel. One of the measures that people forget to do is to ground their generator. So this is a grounding cable. And your generator will have a place where you can clip that on. And then that needs to be clipped to the grounding rod uh, mine is around the corner and by the electric panel, and that grounds uh, your system. So then you're going to need to take the power from the generator and put it into your house. And there's this plug made specifically for it. It goes in, and you give it a twist to seal it. And then you're going to need to take the power from the generator to the house through the Gentran switch as the twist lock secures it. Once the generator is running and is transferring power, you move these switches to the generator position. Your gas-powered generator needs to be outside. Let's talk about where it should not be. It should not be inside the house itself. It should not be in the garage, even with the garage door open. It shouldn't be on a carport uh, next to the home. All that traps the carbon monoxide fumes. And again, unfortunately, every time there's a big storm, people will die from carbon monoxide uh, poison because they uh, put the generator in the lo wrong location. Well, we're going to put the generator into operation and turn on the fuel. So you have fuel going. Need to actually turn this particular generator on. There's a choke that needs to be pulled out. And this doesn't have an electric start, so. One of the things you don't want to do is refuel your generator while it's running. I like to have this be a two-person operation. I like using a funnel to help avoid spilling uh, fuel. As someone with a fire extinguisher, that keeps everybody safe. And remember, use the cable system we showed you. Never plug an extension cord into the generator and then into a regular outlet. I hope you've taken these generator safety tips to heart. So if you're going to get prepared, today is a good day to start. Let's do it safely.